our normal set of DNA. You have one. Remember when we looked at a karyotype? How you had one chromosome from mom, one chromosome from dad. One chromosome from mom, one chromosome from dad. And it went through that in 22 different pairs. And then the very last set were your sex chromosomes that determine gender. But the other ones, you got one from mom, one from dad. So that's where we're starting out, just a normal cell in your reproductive organs. Now we still have to, during interphase, we have to double the <coughs> DNA. So we're going to double the DNA. And now we're into prophase. Now we're going to go through PMAT twice, through meiosis 1 and then meiosis 2. So in meiosis 1, we're going to go through PMAT. We call the first one prophase 1. A couple of really important things happen in prophase 1. This is probably where you're going to spend most of your time when you're explaining this, is um, that you're going to, first of all, the homologous chromosomes. Homologous meaning matching. The matching sets of double DNA are going to find each other. So the homologous chromosomes find each other and they form a tetrad. Tetrad meaning four of the chromatids. When they form this tetrad, one really important thing happens and that's called crossover. Where you have DNA that are kind of crossing over each other, their arms are dangling against each other, they end up swapping pieces of DNA. This is one way to ensure, to make sure that we have genetic variation. Because we all want to be unique. That gives us the opportunity for evolution. <laughs> All right. So now we've had crossing over occur. We're still in prophase one. Um, then we go to metaphase one. Metaphase one, they line up in the middle. Now, how they line up is also another form of genetic variation. We call it independent assortment or random assortment. And that can be like, see how they lined up this way where moms could go this way and dads could go this way, dads could go this way, moms could go this way when they get pulled apart? We could mix that up. We could switch these guys around or switch this around. And now when they split up, it would look different what goes into each cell. So that's another way that we can shuffle around the DNA, and we call that independent assortment or random assortment. So once they've lined up in metaphase one, now we move to anaphase 1. In anaphase 1, we pull the homologous chromosomes apart. A for apart. This time it's the homologous chromosomes. Then we go into telophase and cytokinesis. Not going to spend a ton of time on that. They pinch off and they form two new daughter cells. All right, now just to make it look easier, I'm going to take these out of the cell membrane. So we're going to say that these are two cells. So now we've got two cells. Now we have to go through PMAT the second time. So now it's prophase 2, metaphase 2, anaphase 2. And this is where it looks a lot like mitosis. So we start to see the same steps. DNA condenses into chromosomes. The like chromosomes find each other. So now we're in prophase. In metaphase, the chromosomes line up in the middle. In anaphase 2, now it's the sister chromatids, not the homologous chromosomes. Now it's the sister chromatids that get pulled apart. And we end up with four daughter cells that have half the DNA or half the chromosomes that they started with. So we call it a haploid. They're gametes. And they're all individual or unique because we've swapped them, because it's kind of random which ones are going to end up with mom's and dad's DNA. So we have four unique haploid gametes. And that's the end.